All right, and now for number 12, we need to consider the function f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, which is really just telling us that this is a parabola, ¿cierto? or a quadratic, which is the same thing that we see in the diagram. Um, da, 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 the vertex of the graph has coordinates 0.5 comma negative 12.5. That's this guy here. The graph intersects the x-axis at the points negative 2 comma 0 and p comma 0. See? So all of that is in our diagram. And for part a, we need to find the value of p. Now, the cool thing about quadratic functions and parabolas and all this good stuff is that they are perfectly symmetrical. And so if you go to the vertex, which is this guy here, a vertex is always either a minimum or a maximum, and you kind of like draw a line straight down the middle, the left and right are perfectly symmetrical. See? Why is that useful? It's useful because the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. The distance from here to here is the same distance as from here to here. Ah, interesting. See, it's a little bit like your face. If you draw a dotted line um, vertically from your nose, ¿cierto? you have one eye on the left, one on the right. Symmetry, see? Anyways, you probably know where this is going at this point. The distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. So that is actually something that can help us find P. And so what is that distance that I just drew in red? Well, the numbers we can work with are negative 2 comma 0 and 0 0.5 comma negative 12.5. See, since we're drawing a horizontal line, we're looking at the x values. So we need to compare negative 2 to point, 0.5. See, and so how many units is it from negative 2 to 0.5? Well, if we draw a number line, here, Tom, we have negative 2, we have negative 1, 0, and 1. See? So the guys that I'm looking at is negative 2 and 0.5, which is actually not drawn in my number line. It's right there, 0.5. See? So essentially, I have to look at the distance from there to there. It is going to be, just doing a little bit of math or even visually, you're going to tell that it's 0.2.5. See? So this distance here is 2.5. That means that distance here is also 2.5. That means that 0.5 plus 2.5 is going to be P. P has to be 3. That is part A. Part B, we need to find the values of A, B, and C. See? So of course, this is a little bit more intimidating, but essentially we need to find all the values of my parabola. See? So here, what we can do, ¿cierto? and what you will always do when you're trying to find a parabola and they give you some points is the following. You're going to make a system of equations. See, So a system of equations, maybe bu some buzzwords that you might hear are substitution, elimination, etc. Point is, you know this point exists and that this point exists, see, which is 3 comma 0, right? You know that this point exists as well. So if you plug everything into the, all of that, I mean, into the quadratic function, ¿cierto? I'm going to plug in the first one here. See, we end up with 0 equals a times negative 2 squared plus b times negative 2 plus c. ¿cierto? So that's going to give me 0 equals 4a minus, whoops, minus, minus 2b plus c. Right? If I plug this one in here, we're going to end up with 0 equals. I'm going to go a little bit faster now, but you know what's going on, so it's all good. In 9a plus 3b plus c. ¿Cierto? Awesome. If I plug into the third one here, we end up with negative 12.5 equals 0.25a plus 0.5b plus c. All right? So now, if I have three equations, which are highlighted here, and three variables I need to find, it's solvable. See, So if my number of equations is equal to the number of variables I need to find, through systems of equations, it is something that I can solve. See, And so the first thing that I'm going to do, even though it might look a little bit weird, is equal these two to each other. See, So if I equal these two to each other, I end up with 4a minus 2b plus c equals 9a plus 3b plus c. 
First things first, I'm going to do minus C to both sides. We're going to see that these go away. So now I end up with 4A minus 2B equals 9A plus 3B. See? Now I'm going to put all the A's to one side. So I'm going to do 4A minus 4A, sorry, to both sides. And minus 3B to both sides. So I end up with negative 5B here and 5A on the other side. See? That means that my A cierto, is going to equal negative B because I divide both sides by 5. See? A is going to be negative B. Awesome. So if I go ahead and do that, say, on my second equation, which I will call this one second, see? This one first, this one third. If I plug that into my second equation, I end up with 0 equals 9A minus 3A equals, oops, sorry. So if, if I plug that into my second equation, I end up with negative 9B plus 3B plus C equals 0. See? If I keep working this for a little bit more, we see that C minus 6B has to equal 0. If I move some terms around, C equals um, negative 6B. Sorry, C equals 6B. See? All right. So why the hell were we doing this in the first place? Well, you can see that now I have A in terms of B, and I have C in terms of B. And so all of my variables can now just be expressed in B, and I'm going to do that um, in my first equation. See? So my first equation, I end up with 4A. Actually, no, I'm going to do that in the third equation. We'll see why in a second. So in the third equation, I have negative 12.5 equals negative 0.25 b so i i'm applying this in that scenario plus 0 0.5 b nothing changes there plus 6 b so i will be applying that there see and so now the magic that just occurred is that this negative 12.5 equals only one variable it equals only b before our problem is that it, it equaled three different variables. It equaled A, B, and C, and a bunch of stuff in between, etc. Now this negative 12.5 equals only one variable. It equals only B. So I just have to combine everything and see what happens. See, if I combine everything, I end up with 6.25B. Interesting. So I divide both sides by 6.25. B is going to be whatever that is. What is that? Let's see in our calculator. Bum, ba -da -bum. We have negative 12.5 divided by 6.25. Negative 2. See? So B is negative 2. Now that I have B negative 2, I can plug that literally everywhere. And so if I plug it in over here, we're going to see that A equals negative negative 2. A equals 2. If I plug it in over here for C, we're going to see that C equals 6 times negative 2. C equals negative 12. So that is how you get uh, the A value, the B value, and the C value. Essentially, you have to play around the system of equations in a smart way. And the smart way to do that is to put all of your variables equal to the same one. ¿cierto? What do I mean? All your A's in terms of B. All your C's in terms of B. Once they are all in like the B way, ¿cierto? you plug it into one of them, and boom, you get an actual value. See? Why did I plug it into the third one specifically? Because the other two had an equals zero, ¿cierto? And so I would have ended up with zero equals a bunch of Bs, ¿cierto? And I can't really get an actual B value from there. The only actual B value you could get is if I plug it into the third one, because the third one has a negative 12.5 on the sides, something you can actually play with. Anyways, that is part B, see? For part C, we need to write down the equation of axis of symmetry um, of the graph. And there is actually a equation for that. It is in our formula booklet. And so if I go ahead and look it up in the formula booklet, we can see that it's negative b over 2a. See? So negative b over 2a is going to equal my axis of symmetry. See? So negative b we said was 2. ¿cierto? All of this divided by 2a, which we said was 2. ¿cierto? So 2 times 2. 
So we have 2 divided by 4, 1 half. Okay? So that is my axis of symmetry. That is part C. Now, you actually could have got an axis of symmetry in a different way. Because the axis of symmetry, we said it runs right down through the middle. And it's always going to run right through the vertex. And if you know that the vertex has an x point of 0.5, here's the, which is this guy here, that is exactly the value that your axis of symmetry is going to give you, 1 half. Cierto? 0.5 is the same as 1 half. So you can actually, you could have got it in a different way, but the mega formal way would be using the formula. See? Anyways, that is how you solve this problem.